gearheads, what's up? Welcome to another episode of OCN Drives. I'm your host, Jeff Herbert, and I'm here with my buddies. Graham Briggs. And Alex Ball. As usual. We're here in the beautiful Rocky Mountains with the 2019 Jeep Gladiator, and it is fantastic. Also with us today is our esteemed video producer, who you heard last time, uh, Martin Soderham, and our producer, Josh, who decided to follow us way out into the woods. We appreciate you coming out with us today, Josh. Yeah, thanks, guys. Couldn't have done it without you two. Exactly. Yeah. Now is, he, is he going to take a pee? Yes, he is. But <laughs> anyway, more importantly, more importantly, what? Yeah, Graham's got to get oh, his drink on. Graham's got to get his drink on. Yeah. Well, See, everyone, I'm driving, everyone needs to know so. about this. Drinking Crazy Mountain, Lava Lake again. I think Excellent. I drank this one last episode too, but mm -hmm. I, I enjoy it quite a bit. Yeah. So, and um, we're in the mountains, so Crazy Mountain, it made sense to me. Exactly. Yeah, totally. Would you consider that one of your favorites? It's up there. It's, it's up, up there. there. Yeah. It's good. Okay. Crazy Mountain, if you're listening, send us beer. Send we us love beer. beer. Exactly. Unless we're driving, which I am. So let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you guys know how it works. Um, first bit of news today is obviously Jeep related. I don't know if you guys had read the headline, but it turns out the Wrangler has some new engine options. Mm. Did which you guys is, hear that? Which is exciting. I did not hear that. Ah. So. Yeah, this is news to me this week, too. I don't know when it came out, but it's news to me this week. So it happened about, I want to say, two days ago. Okay. And it yeah. turns out the Wrangler four-door now has the three-liter Eco Diesel. Nice. From the Ram. Mm -hmm. And then they are putting the e-torque systems on pretty much all Wrangler. Nice. Which is awesome. That's great. So. It's yeah, good to have, to... They, they need to have another engine option. I mean, just having one or one to two engine options is not enough. They yeah, I mean, really, options. it's the same engine. They're just bolting on the e-torque. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm sure they'll make other changes to the uh, the engine, but, I mean, it's really, the e-torque is more of a bolt-on system that just helps you get going. Well, and I hope that they put it in the Gladiator, too, and talk about oh, putting it in the Gladiator, so, yeah. too, because they're going to be fighting all these mid-sized trucks coming from Toyota, from Ford, from... Chevy, Nissan, all those other ones, you know, you need to start like looking because they all of those mid sized trucks all have different engine options. You have your base model and then you can go up one step. So I think it would be nice to see that uh, you know, Jeep was putting out what they're they're fighting for that uh mid sized truck uh space and I think they're gonna do well with this current option, but I think to go to that next step is to add additional drivetrain options. Oh yeah, vehicle. for sure. Well, a while back, I did a Jeep Media drive kind of down in Morrison where I drove this actually this truck, oh, this really? particular truck oh, behind us. So that's kind of cool to get back in it. Yeah. And then one of the other Jeeps that I drove was the Wrangler two door, the two liter turbo, and mm -hmm. that thing was fast. Yeah. And that was awesome. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting because they're bringing in Ram technology into the Jeeps. Yes. How they're gonna handle bringing the Dakota back? True. Um, because I. I have read that I think the CEO of Ram was just like, the Jeep Gladiator is not filling the Dakota role. We're going to fill it again. So they, they're they like, so they're not considering Jeep part of their mission okay. at Ram. So they're, and the rumor is, is that by like 2021-ish, we're going to get a Dakota. So that'll be interesting nice. to see how they're, I mean, they're going to cannibalize each other. They're going to, yeah. but it's like... I think I think they're just gonna hopefully. I think the Dakota is gonna be nice enough, where maybe it's not gonna. And the Gladiator is so different. Oh yeah. That really they're just gonna hope the Dakota doesn't eat Gladiator sales and just eats other mid-sized truck sales. Definitely. Which which if the Dakota is anything like the Rebels, and what they've done on those trims, or yes. just it's, it's gonna kill the crap out of the other mid-sized. That Toyota's does, never gonna sell another car again. That does bring okay, up. Okay, that's bring up. It's the, drastic. But, bring up the the conversation about jeep and the gladiator is that gonna cannibalize their own sales or are they going out and getting a new market with like with the gladiator, gladiator versus yeah. like the four-door the two-door four i think that's just yeah. another trim now you have you have a two-door you have a four-door now you have a, a truck i think right. that's just that's... but again that always comes back to are you are you cannibalizing or are you adding to True. that yeah to that well it's just that line. jeep and ram are not the, they're under the same parent company yep. but they're different so it's like for sales purposes if the Dakota starts taking away Jeep sales, then that makes the Jeep, you know, marketing department not happy. Mm -hmm. 
um, and likewise back at Ram. So there is this weird, like, they have to compete with each other because that's how they justify their profits. Yeah. But it's all going to the same parent company, so it's like it's like monopoly money in, like, in a sense when it's like if someone's like, I'm going to buy the new Dakota instead of the Gladiator. It's like, well, really, the money went to the same place, but it's just like, well, Rams technically stole money from Jeep. Um, so that's like the cannibalize. Mm -hmm. True. And I think people that are going to buy this Gladiator are Jeep people, and they're going to buy the Gladiator regardless. I think the, They're not going to yeah. switch to a Dakota just yeah. because that came out. Yeah, I think the Gladiator... This is such a unique is, vehicle. Yeah, it's a very, like, no one just, like, walks in and is like, I need a mid-sized truck. And it's just like, I mean, the Gladiator is just different. It's too different to just like be a random purchase. So you believe it's part, going out and grabbing a new market, but it's not yeah. gonna it's not gonna take away too many sales from a potential Dakota. Market. I don't think so. I think especially. Depends, I think it depends the, how they position the Dakota. If they yeah. position it um, in in a way with the other midsize trucks, I, I guess it just depends how good it is off road. Right. If it's a very on road truck, then obviously I don't think the Gladiator has to care. But if they give it, you know, front and rear lockers, a sway bar True. disconnect, like it could be. I mean, it's just like the power wagon. Also, price is price there. is going to be a big thing yeah. too. Yeah. I mean, I, the Dakota, Dakota is way. Gonna, I bet the Dakota yeah. is going to be under this. Yes, so. definitely. Well, and you're never going to see a Gladiator fleet. Yeah. You know, for a plumbing service. True. Or, yeah. Or an electrician. I mean, yeah, right, yeah. Right. That too. Absolutely. Well, maybe you will. If you, you did. Could. Hats off to like you. The, but... Like the, the Alaskan <laughs> plumbing service where they have to like service people in the middle of nowhere. That's true. It's true. Good. Yeah. Search and rescue and plumbing. Yeah. I think yeah, the e well is really interesting for the Wranglers. And I like, it's just, it's only, it doesn't help you like at highway speeds or even around town speeds. It's literally just like to help you get off the line, mm -hmm. which is interesting because that's like, you're crawling. Mm -hmm. That's like when you go crawling. Right. So it'll be interesting to see how that torque affects rock crawling and if it's better or if it makes it like too much. Or so uh, that'll be interesting. And we'll see the reliability. Part of the fun of the Jeep is that you can drive it through water. Is the e-torque system going to let you do that? Right. Yeah. Or is the e-torque system only going to be really sold towards the you know pavement princesses of uh, you know buying a Wrangler and never once taking it off road? So yeah. it's fine that you can have the e-torque. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure the e-torque also is going to increase the tow rating. That's always been yeah, like that's, true. The yeah, Wrangler, yeah. the Gladiator is pretty good on towing. Um, it puts it in the same ballpark as the other midsize, right. but the um, the Wranglers are terrible at towing. I mean, they can tow and people do it, but they're not good. Right. Like I, it's not recommended. So well, 4500 is that's the smallest of the midsize yeah. right now, right? Well, and that's only in the Gladiator. Yeah, and that's or I mean the well. Rubicon. Yeah, Gladiator, yeah, yeah, Rubicon. It, gets, it gets up to uh, like seven five, I think. Yeah. With with the correct trim. Okay. Um, which is interesting, but yeah, it'll be it'll, it'll be interesting to see if the e torque helps the towing rating, um, a lot. I think that 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 would be my assumption is either they're trying to make off road better, but I'd be worried about water damage with an electric system. And that, or they're just trying to make it better at towing. Yeah. People, they realize that people want to tow stuff. Mm -hmm. True. I don't know. I think if I was that into towing, I think I'd consider a full size pickup. Yeah. Instead. You I, know agree. What I, mean? I agree. Like, if, this is an adventure truck for yeah, me. This is these I don't, mid sized trucks have never come off as towing. It's like it's convenient that they can tow, but you bought the wrong truck if you're like, I'm buying this to tow. Tow, yeah. Like, yeah you exactly. bought the wrong yeah. truck. <laughs> <laughs> Even if that's fun. one of your top three yeah. things on your list. Not the right truck. Yeah. But. And there's, exactly. plenty, there's plenty of half ton trucks, the Rebel, the Raptor, that can do off road, maybe not as good, or it's just different. The Rebel is going after the same market as the Wrangler right. of slow crawl, but the Raptor is just different, right? That's just a Baja truck. So. Right. Sure. And so, yeah. Although, if you are interested in towing, I had a Ram 1500 Tradesman with the Power Wagon package that I wrote about on ourcommunitynow.com. Yeah. So, yeah, the power wagon's a total option. The the 2019 power wagon does about 11,000 pounds yeah. tow, See, that which is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> good. But not for a 25. Yeah, though. But except 20, for oh, you said 25. Yeah, I thought you said 1500. Like, oh, did I say 15? 25? I meant 25. It doesn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. tradesman tradesman apologies. Like listeners. a 2500 <laughs> gets up to like over 20,000. Yeah. And so the power wagon only doing 11 is kind of, is horrible, but it's still uh, significantly better than the 7,000. Oh, yeah. Max if you want to tow and go off road, it's the power, power wagon. wagon. Yeah, totally. No doubt. Well, boys, next piece of news. What do you say we, uh, yeah, go on to the next piece of news, yeah, which totally is fantastic. Uh, 
Let's see, I have it written down here. I'm not being rude. How dare you look at your phone during one of our podcasts? I know, right? <laughs> You're just really not that uh, interesting. Florida man <laughs> parks his smart car inside his kitchen <laughs> yes. to protect it from the hurricane in, in Florida. <laughs> okay, first of all, I don't know which is worse. That is first, car, that smart car can fit in his house. That his smart car can fit in his kitchen, or that he's trying to save a smart car. Yeah. <laughs> like... I mean, it's I'm not, not anti small car. I How drive much a, is Miata. a smart car. I'm maxed out. They don't at, even make them anymore. I looked at it. A maxed out smart car is, was like nine grand. Was it? Yeah. Oh it was my. like highest trim was when I looked at them because I thought it would, because I actually kind of fit in them. They're, they're surprisingly, because they're so small, but there's only, they're only two seats, only right? two seats. So there's actually a lot of, it's kind of like the Mini Cooper. Mini right. Yeah. Okay. Are surprisingly large. Um, you know, there's NBA basketball players that have been known to drive Mini Coopers who are taller than me. True. Um, so there is always, these small cars have a bad reputation of being totally small where it's like, well, no, it's just like the, the entire car is small. But yeah. You still, it's the same passenger space. But uh, yeah, it's like, I mean, like maybe even like, I looked at them a long time ago. So even if they're like, I can't imagine anyone spending $15,000 on a smart car, mm. but maybe it's possible. Yeah, who um, knows? They really don't make them anymore? Yeah, who made them? Who's the... They used to be owned by Mr. Mercedes. Mercedes. Yeah, yeah Mercedes-Benz. Mercedes. It's, Mer it's a Mercedes brand, hmm. yeah. which is funny. But, uh, and we only ever got the two-door, just like, cube yeah. out here. But Smart did things like they have cool convertibles that Top Gear is, like, one of their least favorite cars ever <laughs> <laughs> was the Smart convertible. It actually is a really nice-looking car. Is it? It is, but it's horrible. It does the converter, does it hold top, or is it like one of those things with the like railing on the top, the mid it's, part it's, of the top, and it yeah, rolls back? No, I think it's like because um, they have a, a it's yeah. like the Corvette or the 918. Okay, it's just the hard oh, top yeah. that you take, take off. Take off. Okay, I think it was like that. Because they have that Fiat, uh, not the, uh, is it the 300? The Fiat I, Spider 124. Something like that, but it, it's got the sides, and then it's got a it's got a retractable soft top that comes down the back. Oh, and, oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a weird one too. Yeah, it's an interesting looking one, but yeah. but I think I think that's funny. I mean, you, you do what you got to do, and you you know True. everyone has their own priorities. I guess if you love the car, yeah, we commend you. I don't know for what, trying to save your car. I don't necessarily know what putting it in the house is going to do. Like it'll protect you from the wind, and obviously uh, a smart car is pretty light. Hey, yeah. but mm, water man. damage. Yeah, I mean it's still going to go in your kitchen. So if, if you have that much flood, if you have that much flooding, yeah, yeah I'll definitely really going to get you, yeah. you there. I feel um, like part of the reason why this guy has done it just just to say that he did. True. You yes. know, he he, he's been wanting to do it for years, but his wife yeah. didn't let him <laughs> <laughs> until he had the excuse of a hurricane. True, yeah. I'm gonna build my whole and house around home? my favorite car. Yeah, and there was a. I'm I'm down for that. I but love I am that. So far, I am so for putting cars in your living room. <laughs> if too yeah what's yeah. that movie there's there's a, a a movie with like in a hotel oh you're, any... you're thinking of mission impossible i think it was for mm -hmm. like dubai hotel maybe that but they had the like he has the no, car I know what you're talking... no it's fast and the furious I fast and the furious has a they hotel have one scene. there too <laughs> yes and they drive and he drives through the buildings yeah. Jeez. love it but also not true Could at all skyscraper yeah. with the rock as well no, it's yeah. a movie with a, it's a movie about a heist. Yeah, are you sure you want this on I know, I, record? <laughs> I, know. I, hate that, I, I hate that I know this information. <laughs> it's a movie with a heist that they like have to, they have to go and they find out that the car is like all gold instead of like the actual car and then they steal the car. Oh, that's an old movie. Yeah, it's, but about. it's a Ferrari like a 250 GTB yeah, or something like that. Yeah. But man, I would just put it against a wall in my house and just like have a, you know, I think that's. Car up I think that movie is based on a true story because the guy was hiding all of his wealth in in his gold-plated Ferrari, Ferrari. Yeah, oh, yeah. to hide it from the government. I think <laughs> I think that's actually a, a relatively true story. Oh, uh, well, and could happen because Ferrari owners don't drive their Ferraris. True, yeah. Ooh. Well, I think we should mm -hmm. move on. Josh is, uh, yeah. What's our next? Gyrating at that comment. Do we have another news topic? Oh, that was our, our yeah. only news. We only There's took other two. Things we talked about earlier today that. The i8 has been discontinued from BMW. That's true. Which is fantastic. R.I.P., but it needed to go. Yeah, it was an yeah. interesting looking car. And, it, and that's it. And that's it, yeah. That's <laughs> it, it wasn't particularly fast. BMW, I assume it just didn't sell, so BMW just gave up on it like the first day. 
Yeah. Um, but that was supposed to be their like flagship for the next couple yeah. of years, and they're gonna build all models around that. Yeah, except it sucked. So <laughs> it, was, it was being like the Tesla Model Three has better performance, and it's like a, a quarter of the price. Yeah, I, I mean, I've seen, I've only seen like the outside exterior images. I think I've seen some interior images, but not. I've they sat, don't stick I've, out in my I've head. I've sat in one. I went to a BMW. Yeah, really? you've been. And one? what did? No. Oh. <laughs> How'd you feel about it? I mean, it looks fancy. I yeah. Mean, it's, okay. it's too much. It's actually, I think, more too, ridiculous looking than a Lamborghini. Which too far is forward. Hard to do. Yeah, yeah. But it looks more ridiculous than a Lamborghini, um, and it's like the same price as a Lamborghini, but it has none of the performance. So it's like, let's yeah. move on with our life. Oh, I know, speaking of right? Lamborghini, they announced their uh, addition into the hypercar realm. Yes, I saw that. With the, and I give that a molto bene. Yeah, that's a pretty pretty cool car. What is it? The Lamborghini's it's, coming out it's with not a, a, Senna, a hybrid. But it's a hybrid, the Sion or yeah, something. Sion, yeah. Sion, okay. They're coming out with a hyper car. Mm. And it actually looks fantastic, does, I yeah. have to say. Because I'm not a big fan of the Huracan, mm -hmm. and or even the Gallardo, or even the Murcielago, you know, nothing has really been so flamboyant that it has to be a poster car. And okay. I think the new one, one. is a, definitely a poster yeah. car. All right, boys, let's talk some uh, automotive history. Yeah, totally. Graham, I know you will appreciate this because I'm stoked for this one. September third, eighteen seventy-five. Mm. One of your favorite men in all of history. Well, mm -hmm. I don't know if he's your favorite, one of your favorite men, but mm -hmm. somebody was born mm -hmm. that you would probably like to have a conversation with. Mm. He's an automobile magnate. Did he, he start a company? He started, he founded one of your favorite automotive companies. Well, then you're talking about Fernando, right? Ferdinand. Ferdinand, right, yeah. Yes, Mr. Ferdinand Porsche was born on that day. I like oh, to yeah. say Fernando. Yeah, we're gonna have to like do a, a whole bro. episode yeah. no, about not. Porsche. No. no, just about Porsche. Just about Porsche. He's we'll not actually. He's not my favorite part about Porsche. Either. Well, I know it's his son though. It's my favorite. Right. Well, because he went on to build a lot of freaking sweet cars. Yeah. So. Yeah, and anyways. the cars are just awesome. We have to. We'll have to dive into some of the Porsche like rally stuff and. Yeah. You know, we can I do, do like Porsche rally. Too. I do too. Because it's silly. <laughs> that is pretty cool. It's no place it's, for a Porsche. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. Which makes it perfect. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, what's the next And then Jack? September 4th, 1917, Henry Ford II mm. was born. Mm. So, yeah. Colloquially known as the Deuce. The Deuce. I don't know how he felt about that. Poor guy. <laughs> about, that, <laughs> uh, about that nickname, but. Uh, Oh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty interesting. And that's Good relevant teams. because, as you guys know, Ford vs. Ferrari is coming up, yeah. that movie, which is, I'm, I'm like Super giddy stoked. about it. I can't yeah, wait to see that movie. Stoked. So yeah. that's going to be cool. He was in charge of the Ford Motor Company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, that when, whole when the whole thing happened. Thing happened. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was also uh, he was also responsible for bringing the Ford Motor Company public. Does that have uh, Does that movie have Matt Damon or yeah. however? Matt, it went? Matt Damon. Damon. Matt, Matt Damon is playing Carol Shelby. Got it. Okay. And Christian Bale. Bale's Ken Miles. Yeah, which is good. I like both of them. They'll be good. Yeah, they're both. Good oh, actors. I know. Yeah. God, I hope the trailer doesn't ruin it. Like, it's true. I hope I didn't see all the cool parts. It's also trailer, just. But... It's basically a, a historical film, so we know what happens. True. So that's like, a, the movies like that are always a little less exciting. Um, but in general, I'm excited. I'm going. Yeah, It'll I'm going. I, just, I, I never go to movie theaters because I hate it. I'm going to movie theaters. All right. Well, we'll make a date out Have of it. Have you guys we'll watched all those documentaries on Netflix of Ford vs. Ferrari stuff? Uh oh. No. Uh, there's some good. There's, some, there's like two that are really good. I'll have to show oh, you guys. Awesome. Okay. We'll link to the titles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jeep guys. Guy just drove by in his Wrangler four door with the roof off, yeah. giving us the Jeep wave. Nice. Yeah, it's cool. Right, so yeah, people should, love that car. Should we. Uh, Speaking of Jeep Wrangler, should we move to the next thing, which is the most important thing of our day? Well, that's why we're here. Yeah. We're here to talk about the 2019 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon. Which I think, I mean, we've said it a thousand times, but it's provided by Fiat Chrysler. And it's, I mean, we just can't thank them enough. Cause it's exactly. Just like, spending a day with the Gladiator has just been <laughs> fantastic. And we've done light off-road. I think we could call it medium off-road. Yeah, a little the bit of a did. moderate little, trail. Little, little stone crawling i wouldn't call it full rock yeah, and yeah, certainly yeah. not boulder <laughs> yeah no um, no but we were able to put the jeep through its paces a little yeah, bit we did highway driving we did around town mm -hmm. driving um we've put five full-size men in it and it wasn't great but it was uh, possible 
It was doable. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. No, it was fantastic. I oh, love yeah. this truck. I think you I, guys, you two came into it like probably warm leads and probably moved up just a little bit. Yeah. I, I, I was kind of low on it because cool. like I've just seen photos of it. So riding in it, I, I think I'm more towards, you know, the hotter side. I think like what we've talked about before, I think there's a couple little things and like any car that you're gonna find, you can nitpick and find little little tiny mm -hmm. things. Right. I think some of the space options in the back, like obviously if you're gonna use this as a family trick, if you have a, you know, other than young kids, that would be really hard to, to use. Um, I mean, we're all tall guys too, so me sitting in That's the back true. is just like my knees were I don't were a little I cramped yeah. but they weren't they weren't horrible <laughs> that would not be great with me back yeah there. I, I think you know i could ride in it for four to six hours yeah oh, but yeah. then but then after that i would have to take you know a good consistent break. yeah i don't think i don't think i would recommend like i think i originally said six five i think even like taller than six three and it's not going to be comfortable without modifying the seats oh yeah right well, for long I'm trips for long trips yeah and even i'm just yeah. barely and you're like you're like there. what would be like the perfect fit yeah of like you can't you can't go any taller right um oh perfect fit no yeah. i get that a lot oh you're no. the perfect fit yeah. cute. Um, <laughs> but it's just been it's just been spectacular it's been a wonderful day and it's yeah. totally because of the jeep it's not been a bad ride like uh -uh. Uh, you know the highway was really good like it's highway I mean, was very smooth. it's a jeep there's noises on the highway. Right. We've got pretty aggressive uh, Wrangler tires Correct. with, the, with the, their standard 33s. That's always going to be loud on the highway, period. Yeah, yeah. So you can't, you, you can complain, but it's not a real complaint because you knew what you were buying. Right. Um, we have the Freedom Top, which is the three piece top, which I do think is contributing to a little more wind noise because it's like kind of this puzzle piece you have to put together. And I think if it's perfectly put together, it's probably all right. And I, I doubt it's better than just the one piece of a hard top, right. sound wise. Oh, yeah. But then obviously, you know, it's nice to be able to just take off a partial of your roof. But I like the Freedom Top. I do too. I think yeah. I would probably go soft top, as like if I had to choose, or single piece hard top. Mm -hmm. But he's going soft on us. Nah, oh we God. know that. <laughs> you only made that joke about hey, eight times today. We will. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> But yeah, it's great on the road. It's just really comfy on it is. on the highway and around town. And then when you get off road, we did Oh My God Road today, yes. which is it's really just a dirt road. It is. You, you it's can't not qualify off -road it as off road at all. Um, but the views are spectacular. Yeah, awesome. Everyone should come here. Yeah. You can do it in a sedan. You know, just be careful. But you can. True. True. Yeah. And but I think what we said is it, it really brings two things to different markets it brings to the mid-sized market it brings a more of a like a rugged off-roading environment and the ability to take off the top and have free doors and I, I the think, freedom yeah. but it also takes from the, the the jeep owners to be able to throw something stuff in the back and be able to have like something in the back to store stuff because yeah, that's I, that's one of my biggest things about jeeps is like you can't have just a jeep wherever you're going because you're if you're traveling somewhere to you know go off-roading with your jeep yeah. you have to take something else you have to tow it because you can't fit all your gear and well, all the other typically, stuff in it. typically with like a four-door which has probably been the most popular kind of go off-road adventure vehicle at least in jeep lineup um is, is be, the people get the four-door single piece hard top because then they can put their tent on the top mm -hmm. and put all their gear. Yeah, yeah, so that's it's all on so top. So it's totally yep. possible to just do one vehicle, do a big Moab adventure or something. Oh yeah. But I think I think what Jeep did with bringing the the Gladiator back um, is that it just positions it as just the best Overlander. I, I think in the midsize market, it's probably the best Overlander. And I I say that sitting right here with our camera guy it is yeah Toyota, which is an awesome rig. It I is mean, cool. Yeah. But it's like, I mean, like, from the start, like, Rubicon Gladiator, I don't know if you can buy another vehicle that is going to be as good unmodded for overlanding. Because you can easily put a tent onto the bed posts that, that it offers. Um, so you don't have to drill into your hard top, which means you can actually take your top off. You can take your doors off, because that's a big thing with the overland guys with the four doors. Is they can't take their top off. And most right. of them... I know, and most of them, most of them don't take their doors off Grim. either for rock crawling Sorry, reasons, for safety, um, which would probably still be true to this. But at least you can get your tent and all your gear to the rear, um, which lets you have the ability to have more space 
Um, so I think that's awesome. I, I, I think it, I think it's and I, I I believe I read that Jeep Gladiator owners are now spending more money with Mopar than any other Wrangler. Really? Yeah, they passed all the other ones, oh, which is nice. crazy because there's got to be ten times more people. Mm-hmm in four doors and two doors but it's the gladiator passed him this year with yeah. the most money spent wow. on mopar which is insane that's incredible yeah it is it's really spectacular it's cool but one thing i do need to note while i have you guys here is that the gladiator we, we've been driving it pretty much all day yeah and it is fantastic but mm-hmm. if you're looking for something that drives like a honda ridgeline this isn't your truck no mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. this we feels keep... like a jeep yeah its essence is very truck like yeah totally and i love it yeah, it's great. It's not for everybody, but I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's we say it's a smooth ride and compared to last generation, the JK, oh, it man. blows oh, it out of the way water. Way. The yeah. eight speed automatic is way smoother, um, which is what we have today. We don't have a manual, we just have the eight speed. I say just have the eight yeah. speed. But it's but it's a it's, fantastic it's spectacular. It's been it's helped make it even more comfortable. It's one of, it's, yeah, it's been so, so good time. where I've been a guy who's like, if I ever own a Jeep, it's gonna be a stick. And now after today, I'm just like, boy, that is Dude, that good. transmission is as smooth as Billy D. Williams reading lullabies. <laughs> so, yes. yeah. Martin's chocolate. I mean, it's awesome. <laughs> it's, it's just a great vehicle. Um, and it's just like, I just want more of it. I know. And none of us can afford it. Well, you would buy today. You would buy today. Yeah. I'm still a little, I'm, I'm like right on the edge. Really? So, if I did so it. That's, that's the big question now. I remember in our last podcast, we were talking to Josh. Oh about yeah, mid-size. what mid-sized truck he should get. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I'm pretty outspoken for the Gladiator. Right. Graham, has mm-hmm. the Gladiator moved up at all on your list? Oh, it's definitely moved up, but it's it's certainly it's not at the top right now. It's not that. What's what's at the top still? I mean, Ranger? I don't know if the Ranger's still at the top. I mean, I, I think so. He just doesn't want to admit it's the Taco. No, it's not, the the taco. it's not the taco. Maybe, maybe well, it's maybe money, it's a Nissan Frontier. You're relieved. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we're gonna leave you out I, I, here. No, I hope no, your but... survival survival skills oh, will. Oh, they're on point. Man. You know, I Alex's know dad is from the woods, yeah, really. Sasquatch. Funny. Yeah, we That's never found Sasquatch yeah. today. Where is he at? <laughs> it's tough for me because I'm I'm a total taco guy. I like them. It's true. Um, so taco, is it on the top of your list then? It's definitely, I mean, I think this has always been second place for me, uh, but boy, it's close. Yeah. Especially if I can get it in stick, and that's just like, and I know for a fact that this eight speed is going to kick the crap out of an automatic oh, yeah. Tacoma. So like, if I had Without to pick automatic, it's this every day. But yeah. if I, stick choice, that's a harder one for me. Mm. I, I am more, I, I'm pushed more towards the Wrangler a little bit because the technology is better. It's got a front locker. It's got a sway bar disconnect, which yes. the, the taco doesn't have. Um, so if you did hardcore off-roading, this is probably going to be better. Which, after today, I think you want to do a little bit more oh, rock yeah. crawling. Yeah, totally. I'd check it out on ourcommunitynow.com. We're going to have a video of us doing some rock crawling, some awesome drone footage, mm-hmm. and uh, obviously this podcast. Yeah, totally. So it's going right. to be some cool stuff. Yeah. Next segment. Okay. Real quick, I, I just want to ask you guys one more question. Okay. okay. I just want to ask you one more question. Is uh, if money isn't an issue, is this your top pick? Why or why not? Just in like of the of the mid size truck, trucks? yeah. And if you could fit a little bit better, if I could fit, if I fit, if you fit if equally fit in, in this, this as you did the Tacoma, I would. I think I would pick this. Okay. It's tough. I love the Tacoma a lot, and the 2020 makes me excited. But boy, this is good. And the, it's just so unique. It's just too. Top, top off and doors off yeah. is such a big advantage that it's like, I don't know. I don't know how you don't pick Plus, it. Plus, while we wouldn't consider it fast, it does have more guts than the Tacoma, the Tacoma Yeah. at 280 horsepower and 260 foot pounds of torque. Yeah. And that Pentastar. Yeah. Martin's going to leave us here. 2.6 later. We're, yeah. we're really close to a cliff, yeah, and I'm, I'm worried. He's going to edit it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to edit out the facts. <laughs> We yeah. don't want to spread fake car news, Mark. Fake I, I, news. It is worth, it is oh, worth, fake car news. It is worth saying because we haven't said it. Uh, but our Gladiator today is priced out to just over $60,000. Yes. Which is insane. It's a big chunk I mean, of change. We could list a lot of things that I think most of us would pick over $60,000. I mean, $60,000 is a Ford Raptor. It's a base Ford Raptor. It's true. Would you take a base Ford Raptor over this? No. But I would take a base model Sport S. Yeah. Or sport of this mm-hmm. and my Miata. It's true, yeah. That would yeah. be a Because this awesome is $60,000 for the majority of America in the world. 
would be your one car, and that would be a nice car, right? Like a really right. nice car. Or we're in C8 territory. True. Yeah. So no, that's it's, like. Would you take the C8 over this? Oh, <laughs> yes. The base C8 Obviously. over this? Yes. yes. I wouldn't. I would take this over the C8 because I can at least drive this every day. Like but all still, year. True. Yeah. Okay, I, Ford guy over there. Listen, yeah. No, I like right. to be able to drive the vehicle I purchase year round. Which is funny because I own a motorcycle. And I, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> which is why I'm looking in Colorado. This, yeah. Well, look at yeah. But, yeah. Uh, it's just been great. I'm you know super thankful that we got to do this and that Penn Business Network lets us do this. I know. Which is silly. It is silly. Yeah. And I like it. It is silly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I think if money wasn't an option, it'd probably move up a lot higher on my list. But I think I'd be battling with those those top three. I don't yeah, it's it's certainly Ford, I, Ranger, still, I, this, I think it's fair. And I, think I don't want to say it, but the other, up. yeah, other one. I, I think it's still a competition. I don't think this has blown them out of the water, um, especially again. Tacoma's coming out with a new, uh, updated one, which I mm -hmm. think brings it closer to the you know twenty nineteen range. Right. Um, but yeah, this is just good. I think I would. I think this is way. I've driven a, ra uh, a Ranger. I think this blows the Ranger out of the water. Um, and was, and I've driven, I just recently drove a ZR2 Colorado mm -hmm. and I like the Colorado a lot. Yeah. But the, that's... It, the interior is so dated. Yeah. It just it feels early 2000s and it's yeah. just like, you got to do something yep. with this. Interior wise, yeah. Gladiator all the way. Oh, the Gladiator's like... got the best interior. It's probably Gladiator than Ranger interior wise for me. But this, again, the Ranger just came out. Yeah. Um, so that's not exactly a fair fight. And Tacoma is stepping it up this year, um, so that'll be a little better. So it's like I don't know what I don't know what Chevy's doing, but the ZR2 has got to get a little helping hand on the inside if they want to stay alive. Well, the ZR2 Buffalo of the uh, that, that's just all you outside. Mean the Bison, the, the Bison, bison. Yeah. the Bison. That's just all outside cosmetics, or I say cosmetics, but, but it's, it's not actually in all the useful. it's not in the Colorado, right? It's in the it's Colorado. It's a oh, Colorado. I, okay. It's a Colorado ZR2 Bison. What's is, the is the Colorado the midsize? Yeah, Colorado mm. is their midsize. Right. Yeah. And then they, they have the Silverado. Silverado is their full size. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Correcto. Which cool. also, again, is dated. Like, it's like brand new and the outside looks really nice, but then you get on the interior and it looks more dated than the rest of them. Especially, it does like, look a lot like especially older when you Silverados. Like, yeah. If you put a 2020 brand new design Silverado next to a 2020 oh. Ram, it's it's embarrassing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh the, and the interior. It's just like probably, you guys yeah. missed so hard on this. Well, and ra that ramp did win the awards 10 best interiors. So, yeah. oh, that's great. I mean, it de definitely deserves it. Yeah. So, but uh, speaking of interiors and the Jeep's interior, I have a grievance oh, yeah? I'd like to air about the Jeep. Yeah, let's do it. And it has to do with the interior, kind of. So, I've been noticing on Fiat Chrysler products, I had an Alfa Romeo mm -hmm. earlier this year, which I wrote about. And then now this it has the auto start stop function which is becoming more common and we understand why it's for fuel economy it's not and, even their choice right it's a government mandated yeah thing now. Mm -hmm. but the thing is is every single time you can turn it off there's yep. a button you press to turn mm -hmm. it off which is great and it works except for every single time you turn the car off and yeah. turn it back on yeah. so you recycle you yeah. have to turn it off I again. I, again and i'm I, like i think that's a government mandated thing yeah uh, I, I think they would easily um, be, let you disable it permanently if you can, and you can take it to a dealer. And they're, I mean, I don't think they're supposed to disable it, but they can. But they can. It's like it's literally you can pull. You could do it yourself. You just have to figure out where it is. But it's literally you can pull a, a wire and it's done. So I can roll into like Christopher's Dodge World yeah. or something. So like... it's like if you really, 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 really hate it, you can get it removed. There's <laughs> tons so of YouTube cool. videos showing you how to do it. Right. It, I don't know how you know. I don't know if you'd pass inspection, so maybe if it's not a permanent removal. Well, we don't have inspection here in Colorado, what? just emissions. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah, we had big inspection so, in New England, so. Yeah. That's Welcome your to the West, the yeah. wild, wild West, yeah. where we don't grievance. inspect cars, baby. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Fun. That's a good grievance. I think that's a pretty good grievance. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just kind of annoying. I like, it's not going to prevent me from buying the car. Yeah. Right. But I actually, in the most part, like the auto start and stop, especially in the Rams and maybe this goes to the e-torque the e-torque actually was designed to help with the auto start stop oh okay well um, then if that's the case yeah so so th putting the e-torque engine because the e-torque you can go and the engine doesn't have to turn on yeah so it like helps them cheat that auto stop mm -hmm. start 
Um, that's one of the main reasons it's there, is, is to help you cheat that. Um, and, and, it, and it just makes the auto start system less intrusive, um, which is really nice. Because it is, it's a little clunky, where it's like you stop at a light, yeah. and like the engine turns off, and then you like push on the gas to go, and it's like, wait a second, go. Yeah. Uh, which is a little frustrating, although honestly, you're in a, a big Jeep. It's like, if, right. if you're trying to right. come off the line, you bought the wrong car. I think if it's easy to push a button and turn it off, then I'm okay with it. It's in my car. You just got to push a button. It's just super annoying. I, I, I like it in the like city. Like the city, I'll gain like another maybe two or three miles yeah. per gallon with it. Well, but, the Jeep could use all the help it could get yes. there. Yeah, yeah, we did about with V behind the wheel. We, did, we did. I think I think we did about sixteen today. Yeah, sixteen, seventeen-ish yeah. miles per gallon which is, combined. I, which is what it, Jeep has promised. Yeah, which is nice. Which is good. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, exactly. Um, what well, yeah. do you guys all have right. any grievances? What's your, gr you what's your grievance? My grievance. Uh, I don't think I really have any grievances. I, You're just so elated by the day. Oh, yeah, I have a grievance. Well, let's go. For okay. It. All right. My grievance is this uh, BMW came out with a new uh they did a special thing on one of their x6s it's called a, a vera brad black or something like that but they basically took this uh the old black car the all oh, black car yeah yeah, yeah. so they sprayed it. it with this like oh. foam stuff so it's got some texture on it which a, I, no, I hear it's a it's a it's a paint it's a paint that they typically use it's for a paint satellites. but they, they but they spray but they yeah. spray it and it's it's got some texture to it so okay. if you look up close you'll, you'll see the texture to yeah. it but it absorbs um they can do clothes it's like 99 point something 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 percent yeah. but this one's like 99 percent yeah, it loses like a, like a, like a couple curfew. half percent it's but ridiculous. it looks so ridiculous yeah. and the the thing that i have the most grievance on is that they put it on one of their I wouldn't say it's their best looking car, and I would wish, not say it's their it worst on, looking car either. Why wasn't it put on the M5? <laughs> but they yeah, put it true. on their X6, and the way they said that is they wanted to show off the new grill because Ugh. the grill is huge. And the kidney grills are huge, oh. and it's illuminated. <laughs> yeah, they're illuminating their grill. So uh, I know, the guys at, in, at BMW love that kidney grill. Oh, they love it. <laughs> they won't is, get away from it. It must work. It must be maybe a German thing, maybe the Europe or just the European oh, market man. in general likes it. But I, I just can't. I don't run into Americans who are like, I love the kidney grill. It's not something that I would, I know, it's not same. something that I really like, hate like you do a little bit, but it's more like, it's something that I'm just a little bit like, why? Like, yeah. why are you splitting right. your grill in half? Like, I don't understand that. Well, it, it's trademark BMW. Like, that's, I, I get thing, that's which the is fine, brand, but, but I still don't accentuating understand. Accentuating it. it from a design, like, in that way, yeah. it's yeah. just, uh, I just hate it. But, if that was on any other car, I would really like it. I think, uh, you know, uh, Mercedes AMG has done black versions before, quote unquote. If they did that on a Mercedes AMG black, I'd like that quite a Okay. Bit. The car wouldn't be street legal at all. That, <laughs> yes. that paint in no way no, would be street legal. It's not. It's not be, street legal. Not to like, mention. You, you mentioned that it's like Batman and the Batman Begins when he yeah. turns the lights off yeah. in, his, in the tumbler. Yeah. And you just can't see it. That's what would happen in this yeah. car. Well, that's exactly right. You couldn't drive it at night. It's so <laughs> dark. Not to mention anything that says AMG on it. Is you're willing purchase. you're you're willing just to empty your wallet in front yeah, of Yeah, exactly. It's I mean if if there was a piece of trash over there and it said AMG on it, would you put it in your home? Fifty bucks. I'd buy 50 it. Bucks. <laughs> All, right. All right, boys. Well, well it's been a fun episode. It's been a fantastic day. Yeah. I love episode. being out here in the Rockies with you guys. Yeah, and totally. uh I hope we get to do this again sometime. Yeah. yeah. Until next week. Until next week, but first, I have to oh. thank a few people. I don't oh, want to forget anybody, you know. Yes, thank the people. I want to say thanks to Josh who's right there, you guys can't see him, for letting us do this because... He's, he's technically our producer. He's technically our producer, and without him, well, let's just say this podcast would be a lot crappier <laughs> than it already is. <laughs> uh, Fiat Chrysler Automobiles for keeping us on the road, doing stuff like this. This is absolutely awesome. Um, yeah. You guys are legends over there. This is a dream come true for yeah. guys like us. Totally. And... Uh, Last but not least, ourcommunitynow.com, who uh, gives us the platform to spread the good news of cars and the, the culture word. that surrounds it. And, and a lot of other things, don't too. don't forget our small audience, but yet they're going to grow into a larger audience. And yes. then we're going to have to thank them every single time. Yeah, that's fine. So right. keep That's with true. Us. Well, on that note, I'm your host, Jeff Herbert. Thanks for listening to another episode of OCN Drives. Mm -hmm.